This is Jeff Durkin here with We Are Change Connecticut. We're here after the Bradley Manning March at Fort Meade, Maryland. We're here with one of the marchers, former CIA officer Ray, uh, Ray McGovern. Ray, thanks for coming out tonight. Most welcome. So tell us why you're here today about supporting Bradley Manning. For uh, anybody who may not know about Bradley Manning, why is it so important for anybody to know about his case, um, for other people out there? Well, it's pretty clear why most of us are here. In other words, Bradley Manning did the right thing under really uh, terrible odds. He foresaw what might happen to him and he did it anyway because he was able to see that there was a value above the value of his promise to keep things secret. Ethicists call it a supervening value, okay? A value that supersedes a promise. Promise is important? Of course they are. When you see people being killed, when you see people being tortured, when you see war crimes. Now, if you look at that collateral murder video, there's one leaping out war crime there, and that is shooting up Good Samaritan trying to rescue the wounded. That is ipso facto a war crime. You can't justify that by rules of engagement or anything like that, okay? So when you see a person like that, he needs all the support that he can get. And I know that his lawyer will be telling him this weekend to give him courage that, look, there are a lot of people who know what you did know what courage that manifests, know that you are willing to pay the price, okay? Now, we all have values, right? And we all have principles, you know? And we have this famous expression, we're gonna stand on our principles or stand on our values, right? But you know what? Values aren't worth a darn if you're not willing to risk, if you're, not, if you're not willing to risk something to make sure that other people aren't treated the way Bradley Manning has been treated. In other words, uh, you know, Compassion, the word means to suffer with. So you can have all the great values in the world, but if you're not willing to suffer with someone like Bradley Manning, or in his case, if he's not willing to suffer with those those Iraqis his age, who he saw being wrapped up for writing a, a, a term paper, critical of the government, thrown into a prison where he knew, everyone knew, torture was going on, you know? And then seeing this video. So he is to be applauded and we're trying to make that point because the government's uh, objective here is to, is to dissuade anyone else from doing this. Uh, what they can say is, look, you know, <laughs> the Constitution says the right to a speedy trial. trial. <laughs> give me a break. We can do what we want with Bradley Manning. Three years, three years, been four years, four years, and we give it. And so, you know, if you're tempted to leak what's really going on in Afghanistan, you know, or Somalia, or Yemen, think twice, buddy. See what we did? We give them to the Marines to torture for eight months. That's what's in store for you, and maybe the rest of your life in prison. That's their game. Bradley Manning's game is to do the truth, okay? To do the truth and pay the price if he had to. Now, he might have gotten away with it if that, that traitor in California hadn't turned him in, you know, hadn't gotten to the FBI. But he, you know, in his discourse with this guy, his email exchange, he said, look, I don't know what's gonna happen now, you know? Uh, but I know I did the right thing, and what I hope will come out of this is a debate in the public arena so people can know what's going on in, in their name and uh, debate it and decide whether you really want to treat people who don't look like us that way. So in your own personal opinion, uh, based on what you said, the truth and principles and stuff like that, which was really important, where do you see the case going? Because it's starting on June 3rd, this Monday. Where do you see it going? Do you think the the government will be charging aiding the enemy, which they're trying to do, or where do you see it going for Bradley Manning? Do you see it as, uh, are you more optimistic or more pessimistic in a way? Well, there's a difference between justice and the law, unfortunately. I mean, I've been convicted of illegal assembly simply because I wouldn't leave Representative John Conyers' office when he refused to do his constitutional duty and impeach George Bush. Okay. Now, I was convicted of unlawful assembly. It wasn't a great big prison sentence there, but nothing I could say to indicate the real situation, how I was willing to risk this to show that someone needed to hold George W. Bush accountable, and Conyers was the guy, he was the head of the Judiciary Committee. Now, that doesn't matter. And so here we have a, a question of justice. Did Bradley Manning do the right thing from a justice point of view? Of course he did. I mean, and I teach a course in biblical justice, okay? And the title of the course is Biblical Justice and Un-American Activity, okay? 
What do we have for an image for, for justice? We have a blindfolded lady, right? And she's got two scales. And why is she blindfolded? So she can't show any partiality to one of the scales, right? So that's, that's our image. Now, the biblical vision of justice is biased and prejudiced to the core in favor of the poor. In favor of those poor kids that are being thrown in prison. In, in favor of those Reuters correspondents and those other people who are being shot up by the Apache helicopter. And so if you come out of an Abrahamic tradition, with the Old Testament, New Testament, even the Muslims come out of that tradition, you got to ask yourself, you know, what's become of us? Oh, have we gone back to the very old books of the Old Testament with this vengeance, with this redemptive violence concept? Well. I've been doing a little study on this, and I just cite one verse, and it's uh, that famous place where, where Cain does in his brother Abel, right? Okay. And um, he's walking along, and all of a sudden, he hears a voice, right? Why's your brother? And what does he say? He talks out of the old paradigm, okay? <laughs> How am I supposed to know, right? I don't know where my brother is. And then the voice says, your brother's voice has cried out from the bloody mud that you kill them on. Now, why that? Well, that, there for the first time in the Bible, you see that somebody cares about what happens to people like that, okay? And so Cain is served notice that this is not really in accord with the biblical justice perspective. That's big, that's really big, you know? And when you apply it to what the United States is doing in places where people don't look like us, where people that don't speak our language, and we're young people in a poverty draft from the inner city and from towns in this country of less than 10,000 people. Uh, they're sent off, and when they get in trouble, the congressman people say, well, they volunteer. They volunteer. Give me a break. There's no, no education, no job opportunities in these small towns or where I come from in the, in the South Bronx. Yeah, they volunteered. They needed something like that for three squares and so forth. So there's a terrible injustice afoot in this land, and it manifests itself in this very specific charge against Bradley Manning that he disclosed classified information. Doesn't matter that the classified information were a whole bunch of crimes. Doesn't matter that it showed what we're doing over there. He, he, he violated this little rule. Now, is there any, any prospect that justice will be served here. Well, one has to always keep uh, keep the hope alive, right? Uh, but the way the system is stacked, it looks very much like uh, Bradley Manning's in for a very stiff sentence as a warning, you know, sort of as a, an example of what happens to people who break this little law. Just to wrap it up here quick, any advice for people who may be watching and who may know what's going on about Bradley Manning but don't want to take the next step of getting involved, which is getting past the fear? Um, and can you show your example of what uh, you getting past the fear for others to uh, lead by example and follow your lead or anybody else's lead of, you know, taking that step? Well, Daniel Ellsberg spoke a little bit earlier. He knew that he would face life if he revealed the Pentagon Papers, but he needed to tell the American people what was going on. It was all a bunch of lies, you know? It was all a crock, as we say in the Bronx, okay? And that made a difference. It ended the war a little bit earlier, okay? Now, there are a lot of people in a position to do that, but it's seldom done because of a lot of things. You ask me about my experience, I'll tell you. One reason I feel so strongly about this is that when I had a chance to do what Bradley Manning did, I blew it. During Vietnam, I was working in the CIA. My colleagues had identified the enemy numbers in South Vietnam, the communists under arms, as between a half a million and 600,000 strong, okay? The general in Saigon said, no, 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 we can't go over 299,000. They can't be more, well, where, where was that? Well, they had been killing so many every week in these body counts that, you know, the press in Saigon wasn't all that bright, but they could do arithmetic, you know? And all of a sudden, if you said there were 500, that wouldn't, you know. So we get a cable from Westmoreland's deputy, a general named Creighton Abrams. And it says in black and white, we can't possibly go with the numbers that the CIA has come up with, even though everyone in the whole community agreed with them, except the army, of course. 
we can't go with those numbers because we have proje been projecting an image of success in this war and there's no way despite all the caveats we could adduce that the press will avoid taking a gloomy and pessimistic conclusion period end quote black and white you know generals can have four stars he had three at the time but they're not real bright so I'm looking at that cable right and I'm saying you know somebody somebody ought to take that cable the date was August 20th 1966 now 1967 okay so about five six months before the big Tet offensive when guess what 500,000 600,000 communists okay uh, so I said somebody ought to take that down to the uh, Washington Bureau of the New York Times uh, now this is a stretch for people who know the Times now they need to realize that in those days the Times was an independent newspaper okay and likely as not if you gave them some explosive material like that they would put it on the front page so I thought wow somebody ought to do that I knew that the fellow in charge wouldn't do it because he was so straight arrow you know somebody ought to do that and of course I asked myself well how about McGovern you know and then McGovern said oh gosh uh, I have built in a career here I'm gonna be posted in 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 Germany uh, I have three kids and three kids to educate and two more coming along and and I have a mortgage and I have this great and now, when this happens when I get more senior then I'll rise to the occasion but so bottom line for me I feel terrible about that now would it have prevented several more years of war who can say but things like that do have a great impact okay and if I had done that and the times had run it there's a good chance you, you know the Vietnam Memorial was like okay think of that left hand the, the left left V in the granite it wouldn't be there because there'd be no names to chisel into that granite this is the end of 67 so we had about 20 22,000 dead already ended up with 58,000 because no one told the truth so do I feel a personal stake in there yeah I feel a personal stake in knowing that a 22 year old fellow like Bradley Manning had this innate sense of justice to the point where he was able to put his principles at risk okay and I didn't I was 28 I had studied moral theology you know I was pretty much up on all this stuff I knew the right thing to do I didn't have the guts to do it Bradley Manning did living through the nightmare we the people of the United States were the ones in ignorance and we the people of the United States should never be considered the enemy of the United States government something's gone really wrong if that's now the case it's getting better I think what's important is that we need reasoned expert coverage of what is happening legally what its ramifications are on the First Amendment um, and on military law and that hasn't happened yet